an unruly, headstrong child lost in a world of silence, to an educated advocate for disabilities who mastered the skill and knowledge of communication and human strength through adversity. Helen Adams Keller, born in Tuscumbia, Alabama on the 27th of June 1880, a child full of life and unbridling potential. Captain Arthur and Kate Keller rejoiced at the birth of their first child and were keen to teach her about the world. At 19 months, Helen contracted an illness described by doctors as congestion of the stomach and brain. As the child got better, Kate and Arthur noticed that Helen had become blind and deaf from the long period with a raging fever. Helen had not yet developed communication skills, so did not speak. As she was blind, sign language was out of the question. Instead, Helen was lost in her own world, which she could not escape and no one could enter. In 1886, Kate Keller read an article about a woman named Laura Bridgman, who was also deaf and blind. They talked to Alexander Graham Bell, who told them to get into contact with Michael Anaganos, who was the director of the Perkins Institute for the Blind, the school in which Laura Bridgman was taught to communicate. A young woman of only 20, who herself was visually impaired, although through a series of operations could see, was asked to travel to Tuscumbia and become Helen's teacher. Annie Sullivan arrived in March and would stay as Helen's teacher and friend for 49 years, unlocking the world that was once lost. Annie started immediately with her lessons. She started spelling words into Helen's palm using a specialised form of sign language created for those who were deaf and blind. The first of many words was doll. Annie would spell it. D-O-L-L, -L. Helen would imitate, and then would be rewarded with the doll. At first, Helen was only copying Annie's fingers, although the aim was to attach meaning to the words, so Helen would note that D-O-L-L -L meant doll, and C-A-K-E meant cake. This would be a long process, which impacted everybody, including Helen. Helen was a stubborn child and knew nothing about discipline and self-control, so before she could learn the meaning of words, she had to learn to listen. After a long time, teaching her to be kind, gentle and well-mannered, a breakthrough came when Annie spelt W-A-T-E-R into Helen's palm while running her hand under the water pump. Helen had unlocked the key to language and communication, which was the beginning of a long life spent learning about the world, its society and its environment. 1888, Helen started at the Perkins Institute for the Blind, and then in 1894, both Helen and Annie moved to New York, where she attended the Wright Humeson School for the Deaf. By 1900, Helen was enrolled at Radcliffe College, where she graduated as the first deafblind person to gain a Bachelor of Arts degree. With the help of Annie Sullivan, Helen learned to speak. She gave lectures and speeches to thousands of people. She learned to read people's lips with her hands, read braille and became fluent in sign language. Annie Sullivan married John Macy in 1905, although her health started to deteriorate. Polly Thompson was hired as a maid and became a close friend of Helen's. Annie, John, Polly and Helen moved to Queens, where in 1936 Annie passed away. Helen and Polly moved to Connecticut, where they travelled around the world raising money for the blind. In 1957, Polly suffered a stroke. A woman named Winnie Corbali was hired to look after her until 1960 when Polly died. Winnie and Helen had become close friends, and after Polly's death, she became Helen's companion. Helen continued to travel and speak about advocacy for disabilities. She became an author and published her autobiography titled The Story of My Life. In 1961, Helen suffered a series of strokes. She was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1964 and elected for the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1965. On the 1st of June 1968, Helen Keller passed away. 
Her ashes were placed next to Annie Sullivan's and Polly Thompson's in Washington, D.C. Helen's story has been told many times through books and film. She's become a symbol of advocacy for the deaf and blind and has given an insight into a world with limited senses, although a world with unlimited communication, opportunity or knowledge.